Okay, so you can see here, we're coming up this driveway. This is the house we stayed in Ohio. This is a rural road, um, you know, no real lights on it at nighttime. And you can see going up that grade, it's about 20 feet above the river that's to the right there, um, beyond that house. And the water a couple years ago came all the way up to this road and, you know, put the houses underwater. Um, the first floor, uh, you know, it's tough sometimes in these flood basins or flood zones. There's ice, trees that get washed in, dams get backed up, and, and it happens. But I love driving down these rural roads. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my dad had a little MGB, they're called, I think. It was a, a small convertible. And the number one thing I ever wanted to do with them was just ride with the top down, um, down these roads. And, you know, maybe that's why I like it. It reminds me of my childhood and just like feeling really free um, and just, I don't know, unencumbered, just kind of out there with nature. Um, very fun. And you can see out here cornfields as we're going we're going to come up uh, upon some haulers, they call them, <laughs> and some big farms. That's a huge farm there. A lot of land that goes back to the left and way to the right. Um, there's a couple of those here. Uh, but such such a beautiful day that we're driving with the clouds. Um, we are actually back in Ohio. You can see my other video on Mr. Pops at Fishing where we caught a little smallmouth bass, and that was the house that we stayed at that we're leaving from. And this is, I believe, Old Route 666 or 66, something like that. Um, and that goes along the Muskingum River. Somebody will correct me, I'm sure, if you live in the area. But there's a lot of uh, accidents on this road, and there's been some deaths, you know, at nighttime. It's dark and it's very windy. Sometimes in these rural areas, people are drinking. They leave a bar and they go driving. You can see there's, you know, this yellow line is the only thing that separates from the other side. Head-on collisions or people going over the side. Um, but one thing that's interesting to me is as you drive along here, you'll see really beautiful homes. And then you'll see kind of, um, you know, trailers that are just kind of broken down, but people living in them. And then abandoned homes, um, you just see such, you know, you never know what you're going to see. And you'll commonly see deer or wild turkeys. Um, this is, you know, eastern Ohio, but um, just so beautiful. And we were back here for a wedding. We were actually going to the rehearsal on this drive Um well, the whole kids in the car, I had to mute it or you would hear everything. <laughs> um, but you can see this like beautiful day, 75 degrees. Uh, and then the next day when the wedding was, it completely poured rain. I felt so bad for him. But you know what they say, it's supposed to be good luck. <laughs> um, good luck if it rains on your wedding day. So... Um, I'm coming up on a, another cornfield here. I remember, you know, as a kid riding the bus um, to school and it was a 40, about a 40 minute ride <laughs> from getting picked up. 40, 45 minutes, I had to stop at an elementary and then pick, get onto another bus and then that would take me out to the junior high school or the high school. And it was all roads like this. I mean, this was literally my upbringing. This is like, uh, this is why I wanted to record it, just so you could kind of get a feel. It's so relaxing and just kind of, you know, going along these country roads and just fields for, for days, you know, when you look out to the right and left. And then there'll be a bunch of trees and it'll open up again to fields. And it's just so, so amazing to me. You can see we've been on this road. There's no cars. I don't think, you know, we haven't really seen anything yet. Um, and just these big, huge open farms. And I know some of you will comment in the comment section. Maybe if you live around this area. I know when I posted the fishing video, um, many people said, you know, this is right up the street from where I live. So maybe you can put in the comments a little more history of of this, this road in particular. Um, and you'll see at the end when we get to it, to get on this road, you have to go under an old, 
uh, bridge that's w- as wide as one car. And you have to go through it. It's, it's a railroad bridge um, for a train to go over. And that's how you get onto this road. Probably the scene of a lot of accidents as well, because you'll see at the end, um, you have to honk. And uh, because it's just kind of blind as you go around the corner and go through this little covering. Right here to the left, you see there's a holler. You kind of go up there and keep going up, and it just gets more and more rural. Um, and, you know, just maybe a couple homes up those side streets, and I'm sure everybody knows everybody and all their business as well. <laughs> uh, you can see these power lines, uh, and you see that distinct, the tr- how the trees are growing there. Um, you know, they go through and cut these trees back and make sure that they're far enough away from the power lines so they, they commonly follow the roads like this back here. I know out in California, there's a lot of underground um, electrical lines and, and just power lines altogether. And I don't, you don't see a whole lot of that out here. I know it's, it's in Ohio, but um, maybe it gets too cold. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's more expensive and they don't want to do it. But you, you'll see as you go, you're usually following the power lines, which is also dangerous when people get in these accidents and they hit these power lines and the lines are down. People get out to see if they're okay and people can get electrocuted, which is no good. Um, but as we're, as we're driving along here, uh, it, uh, it reminds me of when I was in high school. There was these old churches from like the early 1800s and there was always stories at my high school that they're haunted and and, you know um people would get their driver's license at 16 and they would try to drive out there at night with friends and this is before people had a lot of easy recording material you know I, i i'm sure it would be amazing um, nowadays people go out there and record staying a night in it. But back then it was just, there was such a mystique about it. <clears throat> and, uh, it's roads like these that would take you out and you go off a side road and just go out into the middle of nowhere. Um, but definitely, you know, creepy <laughs> for sure. I think we're coming up on a house here, um, that is, it was abandoned. And as I come up, I, I asked my wife, I was like, hey, should we stop and go in there? And she's like, are you crazy? <laughs> it's not that one. That was just a another house, but it's coming up on the corner. And, you know, it's just completely abandoned. And it actually looks like it was in pretty good shape. Um, you know, it, it's the windows. Some of the windows were boarded up, but it looked like a nice house. It was right on the edge of the road. But you always wonder just when you're driving along these roads, like the stories, (laughs) the stories of, you know, kind of old beat up houses that have like eight cars in front of them. So, you know, there's a lot of people living there, but they don't even look livable. And then others that look decent, but you can see they're boarded up. Um, You know, I'm sure each one has its has its own story. (laughs) Um, I think this is it right here. Yeah, there it is. I'm like, should we stop? My wife's like, no. (laughs) Um, the other thing, we're not seeing much on this one, on this road, but old barns. Um, so there's, there are a ton of old barns along these, you know, Midwestern, um, old roads, just old farms. And, um, that's another thing that I I love to see. There's a bunch of houses here and then you can see how close the river is right there. And there's a dam right beyond that as well. And then as we keep going, you'll see up here on the right, it kind of opens up a little bit to some soccer fields. And these are fields I used to play when I was like seven, eight years old. And we're talking 35, 40 years ago. Um, And they're still there. You know, I'm sure the trees are way bigger. But, (laughs) um, you know, this, this area goes from kind of, you know, you're not far. You can get into what they would call the city within like 15 or 20 minutes. So, uh, but that's what I love about, you know, these old roads, they can get you deep into the country pretty quickly. And you kind of have these islands and pockets of people with uh, large areas where there's not much. I think we're coming up here to another big opening. 
beautiful house up on the hill there. And then some houses to the right. Bunch of cars. You can see there another one that's right by the street and then there was a couple there that were you know were looking pretty raggedy <laughs> um right there and that house was full of people and cars you just uh you never there's a car right there hey we saw one <laughs> uh another one too so it had been a while but so yeah you know growing up in an area like this as a kid you can imagine you just go you just go you just get out, you, whether you got a bike or you just start hiking, um, you know, whether your parents were, had to work a lot and they were never home. I was a latchkey kid like that. Um, but you just would just hike and, and it was just so amazing. Uh, but here we're coming up, you'll see all these signs, um, 10 foot, five inches, and you'll hear, I turn the sound back on. This is what you have to do to go through this just so you can see it. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for popping by.